Hello and welcome to this demo video for the Recur Boy, which is a Raspberry Pi Zero video instrument. I'm just going to show you through some of the features and talk a little bit about it here today. So just one note about this uh, before we get started. Um, it's based on a Raspberry Pi Zero, which looks like this. And although the Recur Boy instrument is available in the underscores.shop, we currently are not able to get bulk supply of the Raspberry Pi Zeros, so that means that all um, versions of the Recur Boy that you can buy from us do not include this Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, that means that you're going to need to find the Raspberry Pi Zero yourself. Everything else that you need, including the SD card and the headers, will be included with your kit or assembled unit. So. Um, when you get your Raspberry Pi Zero, you need to have on these GPIO headers. So that's the 2x20 row there, as well as the TV. Uh, this is the composite video output headers, these two uh, just here. And then they connect to the back of the Recur Boy uh, PCB, and that's how you make that connection. So. Even if you buy an assembled unit, you still have to uh, do that little bit of DIY yourself. And you can find the um, written documentation of how to do this on the project GitHub page. Okay, so here you can see the Recur Boy in its powered on uh, state, and also see the output coming from the uh, composite video out on the back here. So to get it to the state, I just plugged it in at the back here with a um, USB micro. Um, the back of the Raspberry Pi Zero has three ports on it. So from the first left to right, there's the power one, which is currently plugged in now. Next is the um, USB data plug. We'll talk about that a bit more later on. And finally, there's the mini HDMI plug. So remember to power it on always with the leftmost micro USB. So yeah, you can see here the output's being captured on the screen and it's just displaying the Recur Boy splash screen. Now, the first thing we'll talk about is the different um, modes, starting with the sampler mode. It's a little bit hard to read the uh, text on the LCD screen in the video, although, yeah, it's clearer when you're looking at it um, yourself. It says at the top here, sampler, and then you've got a list of uh, video and picture files. The navigation works by moving up and down with this um, four-way switch. So down, you can see that cursor moving and back up. And then once you've selected a video you'd like to play, you hit the select button to launch it. And now we can see this nature video has started to play. If I go down to the next one and then put select, you'll see that a different clip has been triggered. Um, now on the leftmost control, there's a play pause button. So pressing that pauses the video and pressing it again starts it as you would expect. Okay, so the next um, part to talk about is the uh, other kind of content mode, and that's called shaders. So if you hit the mode button here, you will cycle through all of the available modes. So now, <laughs> again, you can't read it, but this says shaders at the top. And in the newer versions of these instruments, I'm calling this mode pattern mode because shaders is kind of a more technical term for what's happening. Let's just show an example of that uh, by selecting the first one in the list here with the select key. So yeah, you can see the output now. What's playing now is not a pre-recorded video, but a pattern that's been generated uh, in real time on the graphic uh, GPU of the Raspberry Pi. So because of that, we can also manipulate the um, parameters of this pattern. 
using the four potentiometers that you can see on the side of the screen. So as an example of that, if I rotate this first one, you can see that the shape of the pattern is changing slightly. And then the second one, this one I think in this particular case controls the zoom. And every one of these patterns, um, the parameters do something slightly different. So if we could take the next one in the list called basic tunnel and select it, now you can see that controlling the um, parameter knobs on this one affects the output in different ways. Um, the only exception to this is this fourth parameter knob, which always controls the playback speed of the pattern. So you'll see here that I can make it go faster, slower to stop, and then once you turn back the other way, uh, slower and faster in the other direction. So that's the same for all of the patterns. This one always controls how fast it moves, and the three other ones control something different each time. So, yeah, the navigation of patterns is exactly the same as the um, sampler mode, selecting them with up and down, and then select to run the chosen one. Play and pause does the same thing pauses the shader and then starts it again when you hit play. Um, and then you can get back to the video mode by hitting mode button again and then selecting the video you'd like to play and triggering it. By pressing the right um, button, if I do that now, you'll see that we're taken to a third mode which is called FX. And this is accessed differently because the effects are applied over top of whatever is playing on the base mode. So right now we're playing a video. If I trigger the first effect in the effect list, again selecting it by up and down to uh, hover over the effect you want and then pressing the select key to run it. You will see that now we're still seeing the video play, but it's being processed through the, in this case, balloon effect. Now the parameters knob will adjust this effect. There's a lot of different um, a fix to try here. So let's just do another one to give you an example. And another one. Again, selecting up and down to hover over and then select to run it. Some of these can get quite, quite abstract to the point where you can't even really tell what's happening underneath. So a quick way to toggle the effects on and off is with the effects key down here. Um, pushing it will go back to the base video with no effect and then pushing it again, you're back onto the effect. So now that we've selected an effect that we like, let's, let's go for the ASCII-like effect. Now we can always go back uh, to the base um, content mode by pressing the left key on the, on the keypad and then select either a different video or in this case let's try putting a pattern underneath the effect. So now we're running 
the um, sh shader acid zigzag and then on top of that we've got the ASCII like effect toggling effect button we'll turn it off so you can see it without the effect and then toggling it back on now these parameter knobs um, when you're in the when, when you're running a shader will will change what they affect based on what screen you're in so currently we're on the left screen which says sh shader and changing these knobs will change the um, will change the parameters of the pattern base pattern underneath but then if we move the uh, cursor to the right and go into the effects mode now these will change the parameters of the effect so don't forget that the parameters do depend in this case on what screen you're on okay so the next part I'm going to show you is how we can control the four shader parameters using these four control voltage inputs on the top of Rico Boy. So basically you can also externally uh, sequence these parameters using something that can generate control voltage function generator. So here I've set it to be a sine wave and it's outputting between 0 and 5 volts. So yeah, these inputs respond to the range between 0 and 5 volts. It, let's try sequencing the first parameter of this shader um, externally using control voltage. So I'm plugging in the output from my function generator sine wave at 1 hertz between 0 and 5 volts. If I change this input to the second one, then you'll see a different parameter is being sweeped through. And I can also adjust other parameters um, manually while something's being sequenced. So you can see there now this parameter is changing. Also this one, if I want to zoom in or zoom out. Let's try changing the wave type. If I switch it from a sine wave to a square wave, mm, let's try a triangle wave. And finally, a sawtooth. Plugging that sawtooth wave into the zoom parameter in this case, and finally into the speed control parameter. We also can change it so that, for example, we go over to the effects side and then we make our CV control parameters of the effect. Let's try plugging it into a different one. And of course, because it's controlling an effect now, we can even change our base uh, content to a video, and we're still getting this sequenced um, parameter effect. The easiest way to put your own content onto the Recur Boy is to use a USB stick. In conjunction with one of these, which is called a on-the-go adapter, it has micro USB on one end and a USB-A port on the other. So put your USB stick into your computer and create a file on the top level called videos with a capital V. Inside this folder put any videos that you want the Recur Boy to load. Then remove the USB, put it inside the on-the-go adapter and plug this 
uh, micro USB into the USB data port on the Recur Boy. Now, for these videos to be loaded in, you need to restart the Recur Boy. So, the safest way to turn it off is by holding down the play pause button for about five seconds and then it will start the safe shutdown. So now I'm showing you how to use an external source with the Recur Boy. So I've plugged in one of these EasyCap video capture cards into the on the go uh, cable that then connects to the USB data port on the Raspberry Pi Zero. The other end of this is going into a camcorder. Now if I push the mode button to cycle through base, um, base sources I get a third option. So difficult to read but this one says camera. Now we can see that that video is coming through which is fine on its own but the real deal the real fun part is now putting on the effects there's a few special effects on here which start with FB underscore that stands for feedback and this allows for some pretty interesting um, kind of psychedelic patterns to emerge I also managed to get uh, external video capture directly using this um, old Logitech webcam that I found at the tip shop plugged directly into the on-the-go cable. Another way you can use the on-the-go cable is with an uh, external USB MIDI controller. So in this case I've got my Korg NO control plugged into the on-the-go and then into the Recur Boy. When I, when I boot it up in this formation, I can now use the um, external MIDI controller to control the Recur Boy. So we can use, for example, the sliders on the um, Nano controller to change the parameters of the shaders. And we also can use the buttons to uh, select a new shader and to toggle the effects on and off. One advantage of using a MIDI controller to sequence the Recur Boy is that you can map the uh, parameters of the effects to different knobs as the parameters of the sh of the base shader. So in this case, I've got these top uh, knobs changing the effect, and then I've got the bottom sliders controlling the the pattern.